murder. His habits as a serial rapist are believed to have begun much earlier, but very little is known about his life in Mexico. Much of that chapter remains a mystery. Juan Corona was born in Mexico in 1934 and moved to Yuba City, California, in the 50s. In 1956, well before his string of murders, Corona was diagnosed as schizophrenic and was institutionalized after a series of intense hallucinations related to a flood that had killed dozens in the area. After several rounds of electroshock therapy, Corona was released and went on to marry and have several children. Though his illness seemed to be at bay he had quickly worked up to a labor contractor position, Corona became unraveled in February of 1971 when the murders began, and some speculate that he was battling an intense self-loathing with his own homosexuality. Around the time of the murders, Juan's half-brother, Nativitad Corona, mysteriously fled from his home in Marysville, California, allegedly taking refuge in Mexico. Nativitad had owned a restaurant called the Guadalajara Cafe, and he had just been sued by a former patron for $250,000. The plaintiff in that suit alleged he had been brutally attacked by Nativitad with a machete in the restaurant's men's room, after rebuffing his sexual advances. Nativitad defaulted on the judgment and opted to skip town. Later, when Juan Corona went to trial, his defense team attempted to pin the murders on Nativitad, whom they claimed suffered from syphilis, which sent him into fits of rage. Conveniently, Corona's lawyers claimed Nativitad had passed away from his disease, though some light investigation showed that this was likely false. A local peach grower named Goro Kajahiro noticed a freshly filled hole on his property. Believing that someone had illegally buried their garbage, he called authorities. When local police did a little digging, they uncovered what would be the first of 25 bodies. A man repeatedly stabbed, his head mutilated by a machete or cleaver. As police uncovered more bodies, they found some pretty damning evidence. For whatever reason, Corona had buried some of his victims with grocery receipts that featured his own name. This was enough to put authorities on his trail. When all was said and done, 25 bodies were uncovered along the banks of the Feather River near Yuba City. All the victims were men and itinerant workers that Corona personally oversaw. At the time of the discovery, it was one of the worst cases of serial murder in U.S. history. Juan Corona remains one of the most prolific serial killers in California's history. After the discovery of evidence in some victims' graves that led to Corona, authorities descended on his property and executed a full search. During their investigation, police found a machete, a meat cleaver, a pistol, blood-spattered clothing, and digging equipment. Beyond those items, authorities also found a death ledger that contained the names of eight of Corona's victims, as well as the dates of their murders. Though he amassed a staggering body count, Juan Corona's murder spree only lasted about six weeks. Beginning in the spring of 1971, Corona went crazy with killing, as his bloodlust seemed to be accelerating at an unsustainable rate. It's likely that the frequency of his crimes is what ultimately made him reckless about covering his tracks. Some psychiatrists theorized that the warming weather set something off in Corona. Juan Corona was convicted in January of 1973 of first-degree murder on 25 counts. As the death penalty was banned in the U.S. at the time, he received 25 concurrent life sentences. In 1978, his conviction was overturned due to incompetent counsel, but he was again convicted in 82. Shortly after he received his sentence, Corona was stabbed by a fellow inmate over 30 times with an X-Acto knife, losing his left eye in the process. He was denied parole eight times, and he died of natural causes at an outside hospital on March 4, 2019, at the age of 85.